Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to All About Canadian Books. This week's author reading and writing tip is from Leslie Kruger and her novel is Time Squared. If you missed our Behind the Book interview, and you don't want to miss it because it's very interesting, we discuss not only the book, but also hockey and how it inspires some of Leslie's work. I'll put a link down below and you can watch that interview. And Leslie, so first off, before you're reading, you are a prolific writer. Um, what writing tip do you have for us today? I think the main thing is for people just to write without being self-conscious. Uh, you know, I've taught writing a lot and set exercises. There are exercises online people can, can do. One of the things I, I did with classes of mine was walk them around the university campus for about 10 minutes, come back, ask them what they noticed. And they would be amazed to find each of them had noticed something different. Somebody would have noticed a poster. Somebody would have noticed a little romantic interaction between two <laughs> students. Somebody might have noticed a fight. And so the point is, there's all this material out there that's individual to all of us. I asked them to sit down and write a paragraph about what they'd seen on these occasions, and it would be unique to them. Um, and I think if you do this sort of thing and understand that you have something to do, that you have something to get out, then it's a good way to get started. And then, there, of course, there's the editing <laughs> and <laughs> rewriting forever and ever. But the point is to not be intimidated about getting down what is really in there mm -hmm. that you see, because it's unique and it's something that only you can write. There you go. I love that. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So thank you, Leslie. And uh, Leslie's going to read us an excerpt from her novel. Before she reads, um, why have you chosen this particular passage, Leslie? <laughs> I've chosen the beginning. Um, ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's a fairly complex novel because it involves time travel and time jumps. And for me to have to sit down and explain it, I think it's actually quite easy to read. People yes. can, well, you read it, Crystal. I, yes. I think it's quite easy to pick up on what's going, but for me to explain it at great length at first, <laughs> It would yeah. take up far more time than the reading would. Mm. <laughs> and I love the book, everyone, by the way, so. <laughs> Thank you. Pleasure, okay. pleasure. Okay, so away I we will go. Start. I yeah. will start just a brief bit from the beginning. And I'm going to have to take my glasses off to see it properly. They said the war would be over soon. But they always said that, not that it was officially a war, a police action, the president said, although the newspapers didn't agree. The Korean War, they called it. Eleanor was watching the CBS Evening News to get the latest updates. General MacArthur was eagle-eyeing the North Koreans across the mountains, or at least from his hotel in Japan, where he waggled his his cigar at the cameras. Millions of communist Chinese soldiers were marching in, thick red arrows on a map tracing their route. It sounded less threatening in print than it looked on her aunt's new television set. They called it black and white, but to Eleanor the picture looked black and blue, the world bruised with crisis. More nuclear tests in the Pacific too. A mushroom cloud bloomed on the television screen, newsreel footage Eleanor had seen before of the beautiful man-made apocalypse. She got up to turn off the set. It wasn't just the news, she had a headache. Yet what was going on in the world left her terrified. North Korea invading South Korea, communism fighting capitalism, nuclear weapons always a threat. And her fiance was in the thick of it, 
when Eleanor longed for peace and stability after the Second World War. She'd been a child in London during the Blitz, tagged into air raid shelters, her ears ringing with sirens and wails, learning far too much about fear before she was 12 years old. She'd also been an adult during the Blitz, and that wasn't a metaphorical description of a girl who had experienced war. It was the impossible literal truth. Visions. Eleanor had been having visions lately, some of them brief glimpses of other lives, some long vivid dreams, months going by in a night, all of her dreams, no matter how long, complete immersions in different times when she was herself. But life was unimaginably different. She had no idea why this was happening, feeling pushed around by a cosmic mystery. She also had a question. Was this the real time she lived in? Or was it only another dream? Thank you, Leslie Kruger. Thank if, you, Crystal. If you love history and time travel, highly recommend. Oh, and a good love story, I should say too. Highly <laughs> recommend Times Square. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, Leslie. Um, really enjoyed speaking with you. It was lovely to speak with you. Thank you, Crystal. Viewers, thank you for watching. I will put links down below in the description box so that you can purchase a copy of Times Square and also visit Leslie's website so you can learn a ah, I can't talk here. Learn more about her and what she's working on. And please come back in two weeks because I'll have author Catherine Gordier here and she will talk about her memoir, Breathe, Cry, Breathe. Thank you for watching.